I wanted to ask you, especially talking about the you know the 40th uh, anniversary of Bright Lights. Aside from the obvious, like ebooks and things like that, but what are some of the big changes you've seen in the publishing world? Uh, you know, let's and we'll fortify ourselves here uh, um, as well with some champagne. But you know, you've seen you've kind of had a front row to this for decades. Uh, and you can kind of mark time by the publication of Bright Lights. What are the, some of the, you know, I know a couple things that I have seen to start the ball a little bit, but you mentioned uh, Bright Lights almost ran out of books and the, you know, now there's yeah. rapid printing so you can, yeah. you know, they, yeah. they do smaller print runs because they can print faster and things like that. And yeah. ebooks are a thing too, but there also seems to be a slightly different vibe around publishing in terms of the martini lunch and yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, well it's, yeah, I mean, there have been people me too out of publishing, frankly, some of whom I know. I know. Um, uh, I'm waiting to see what the editing process is with this book. I worry a little bit about the sort of wokeness of of publishing at this at this moment, just because. Um, I mean, it's not worth <clears throat> it's not worth mentioning who, but someone who wrote an early read an early draft of this book said. You know, you say, you say these things that you can't really say anymore. And I said, "What do you mean?" And this one, this character in my in my novel goes to a gynecologist, uh, who's you know her, her old gynecologist has died, and the new one is a woman. And so she, and so this woman in my novel thinks to herself, "Well, thank God she's Jewish at least." In, <laughs> in other words, one wants to have a Jewish doctor. Mm-hmm. And my friend said, "You can't say that anymore. That's just not." You know, the, the, your editors won't let you say that. And well, I don't know. I, I don't know if that's true or not. I hope it's not true. But <laughs> right, it's like, we're all inventing characters. Those characters, all these characters exist, right? I mean, I mean I, I, as I said, I have not. I haven't been through the editing process on this current book. But, mm-hmm. but, but I think, I think it's less frequent that a book becomes a. Um, a cultural event. You know, I mean, mm-hmm. I'm trying to think of what the last. Yeah, I mean, I remember when the world according to Garp was published. That was a pretty big deal. Or mm-hmm. Brightler, you know, Brightler's Big City. Or um, when was Garp around the same time or a little before? No, I guess it was, right. It was Se- like late seventies, mid seventies. I think. Yeah, okay. I had a whole John Irving phase where I was just obsessed with John Irving. Well, he's a very good writer. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, I just, I just don't know how. Um, it, it seems like not so frequently that a book crosses over into. Um, the popular consciousness if it's if it starts out as a literary endeavor you know mm-hmm. um well, i i, I your point I, in the I, editing I, if they're going to really dial back the last things one. they're going to press buttons it's certainly not going to cross over to be an important book if it's mm-hmm. if all that stuff's going to get weeded out of there yeah well i as i say i'm i'm hoping that i'm hoping that that's exaggerated but one wonders for instance i mean could a book like um could a book like american psycho be published now i'm not I'm not mm-hmm. sure mm-hmm. that it could be. It's it may offend t- too many too many people in the in the publishing world, you know. So before we go to lightning round, one one final final question. 